What's going on guys, Kaivox here, and we're gonna be going over a somewhat comprehensive-ish uh, overview of where you guys should buy your uh, replica wands. So for the most part, I would always recommend Noble Collection, but the thing is Noble Collection makes a few different variations of the wands. Um, for the most part, it's not really the wand themselves that are different, it's the actual boxes and where you're buying them from. For example, Barnes & Noble has a version of some of the wands. Um, Universal has a ton of wands. And then we have the two different ways to get wands directly from Noble Collection. Let's get a few things out of the way. All of the wands that they sell are the same. So you have nothing to worry there. If you just want the wand, just get the wand. So this is gonna be a recurring theme in this video. It really all depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for just a toy wand, you're gonna to wanna to go with Barnes & Noble. It's the cheapest route and you're still gonna get the same quality of wand. You're just not gonna get a wand box, display box. The main difference is gonna be the boxes and that's what we're gonna be going over today and also the price. The price is very, very, very important to a lot of people. So I made up four categories for this. Uh, so we have the pricing, the quality of the box, the displayability. I know that's a, that's a stretch, right? And then the overall value of the wand. So hopefully by the end of this video, you guys can decide on which ones you guys want to start collecting if you haven't already started collecting them. So yeah. If you end up liking this video, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and let me know down below if you guys have started your collection yet, if if you guys, if you disagree with what I'm saying in this video, and um, which one you guys think is the best value overall to start collecting with. All right, so let's start off with going over the, um, what we're actually gonna be talking about today. So we have four boxes for you guys today. Um, this is the Grindelwald box from the Noble Collection, the standard Noble Collection wand. There's a couple of pros and cons to this. I will go over them. Um, this one right here is the cheapest, which is from Barnes & Noble. And then we have the other um, Noble Collection wand here, which this is uh, the, the new collector's edition, Fantastic Beast Crimes of Grindelwald wands set. Is that does this guy? And then this is the Universal box that uh, that all the wands come in from Universal Studios, Florida. At least that's where I got mine. Um, they may have changed them, or they may have them. They may be a little bit different in other countries. I'm not sure about that. Let's start off with price. What are the prices of all of these? So let's start off with the uh, the most expensive, I guess. So. The Universal Studios box, I believe when I got this, which was probably f almost five years ago now, it was, I believe, $35. And now, now, this little guy, this this just simple, simple little box is a whopping $46, which I, I don't even know what to say at this point because it's it's just that's ridiculous that that's how much you have to pay but i guess that's the premium that you pay if you want to if you want to get it at the park and now moving down we have the noble collection wand collectors box wand box got him this guy comes in at 3750 and then this right here is the cheapest one and that is from uh, barnes and noble that this guy is $30 doesn't really come in a display box. I guess it technically comes in a display box, but not a collector box. And then we have the standard box from Noble Collection, and uh, this guy comes in at $32.50. So obviously, when it comes to price, the Barnes & Noble is number one, and definitely if you just want a wand, that's the one that you're gonna wanna get. Again, if you're trying to collect them all though, they're not gonna have all of the wands from everything, so you're gonna have to mix and match them. Now that pricing is out of the way, let's talk um, quality. I would say that the collector's edition box is probably the fanciest, the nicest, the coolest looking box, The probably the most authentic looking box as well. Um, first thing is it comes with this nice little cloth that goes over the wand, which looks nice, it's beautiful. Um, we do have a little bit of some 
a little bit of ugliness there when it comes to this little fraying here, but this is a nitpick. I mean, I don't love it. I just think it looks nice when it looks nice, but quality wise, I would definitely give it to the Noble Collection collector box. Um, especially this one. But now when it comes to some of the other ones, they're not all created equally. You have something like the original Fantastic Beast wand set that, as you can see, has this hideous, in my opinion, Fantastic Beast logo right in the middle of it, which just takes away from the, from the whole thing. It's the horrible thing that basically everything that's Harry Potter or now Fantastic Beast is going to have some sort of Fantastic Beast sticker on it as opposed to Wizarding World or something like that. I, I really like the, the way that they're going with the uh, Wizarding World logo as opposed to the Fantastic Beasts or Harry Potter logo for everything. But very simple box, has a simple Albus Dumbledore on the side there, um, on both sides on this box. I wish it didn't have this. I wish none of the boxes came with the character names on them. I wish it just came with labels as if you were getting, you were Albus and you were getting the wand for yourself. And it's a, a recreation of his wand box and his wand as opposed to something like that. It doesn't look bad. This is definitely the best looking nameplate on all of these, but not my favorite thing. And now for this guy, uh, pretty much the most expensive box that you could buy um, for these wands because it's universal and almost $50 is just killing it. So the way that these boxes work, um, they're definitely a lot simpler. There is one thing I like about this box more than I do this box, but we'll get to that in a couple minutes. The inside of this is actually made out of um, just a, a somewhat flexible plastic, kind of what comes in um, in a lot of toys, uh, holding them, and it's a plus and it's a negative. It doesn't look that bad on a shelf because it just looks like some sort of pillowy looking material because it is kind of velvety looking. This box is slightly thinner, as you can see, compared to the collector boxes. Um, they also come in different lengths. Uh, so it's a plus and a negative when it comes to that because if you want all of your wands to look uniform, all of them to sit on the shelf perfectly, then being different lengths is not going to help that. But if you want it to be more authentic and you want it to be more like a real wand shop, then yeah, then this this probably look pretty good. As you can see, it holds the wand pretty well and it has that cut out perfectly for um, whatever wand is made for the box. That being said, when we're talking about this guy right here, it's basically an actual cushion in here and the wand just sits right in there like that. So when it comes to quality, I would give this guy uh, a second place tied with the standard Noble Collection wand box. This box is very similar in size and shape to the Universal boxes, except it has this hideous sticker on here. No stickers on the edges. The Universal box doesn't have a sticker on one side and it does on the other side with the character name. I am not a fan of these stickers. I wish you could just take them off and leave the box blank, but uh, that may mess up the, 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 the quality of the box. One thing I really like about the shipping of these is that um, it does include this little guy right here which helps basically just keep the, the wand from rattling around too much. And if it does come loose from the holder, it won't actually scratch anything. It'll stay uh, nice and good looking. These also come with these little, uh, these little displays here that, I mean, one, you can attach them to the wand if you want. Um, probably wouldn't recommend that. You can attach them there or you can attach them to the actual display. So if you buy four or 10 wands from Noble Collection all at once, you actually can get a wand display that comes along with it. So that's definitely something that would add to the value of the wand. But right now we're just talking about box quality. And now let's talk about last place. Um, when it comes to the box, this guy right here, very similar to the material that this is made out of. Um, it's exactly the same actually. Uh, but the only difference is that it doesn't have an actual box to put it in. If you end up making a box similar to this one, um, you can then stick this little guy in it and display it and it would probably look great. But this has that same exact 
style, just this hard plastic or soft plastic, I guess you could say, with the, a little bit of the, the nice clothy finish on it. It's not too bad, but definitely not something that you could easily just display on a shelf. You can do that, and that's about the best that it's gonna, it's gonna end up being. Set myself a little bit lower for this section because I want to go over the way that this is, uh, this is the way that you're going to display these. Um, me as a collector, you can see that I have a, a ton of wands over there in the back, and that's how I like to display them. Or if they're on a display like this, obviously, but that doesn't count because usually those don't come with boxes. So let's not talk about that. When I got my first batch of wands, I got these universal wands. I probably bought like 20 of them or something like that. Um, and I loved the fact that you could just place them on a shelf. You can interlock the box back up like this and just display them on a shelf. Beautiful. I think that that's the best way to display them. I would say that the Universal Wands and the Noble Collection Wands are almost tied for first place when it comes to displayability, like how you display them. But I would give the edge to the Noble Collection Wand. The universal one has all of the nice features. The fact that this is nice and hard and actually holds the wand. You can tip it over. It won't fall off. If this thing tips over on the shelf, it's not gonna, your wand's not gonna fall out and break for the most part. And maybe it will if you put it up somewhere really high. But the fact that it holds your wand, it looks good. You can see the entire wand is, is a big plus. The reason that the Noble Collection box is better, the standard box is better, is because you have a few options when you go to buy these. Um, if you're buying one at a time, you don't have that many options. But if you're gonna buy a few at a time, let's say four or 10, those are actually the two exact numbers that you need to buy because that's how that works. At least when it comes to the US, if you buy four or 10 wands, you get a display included for free, plus all the boxes. So it's a pretty good deal. And you get the previously mentioned little name tag that you could hang off the wand if you want or display it on the display. There's a little spot for it on there. I think the name tags kind of look cheesy, but that's just a personal preference. Everything's subjective. If you guys don't like my opinion, then too bad is my video. I don't care. That being said, um, I, I definitely love these boxes when it comes to displaying. This is my favorite. You can stack them if you want. It's not that big of a, like, look at that. Look how good that looks. You can, you can put them like this and put another one right here. And that's pretty much what I do for my, for my display, so. But now when it comes to displaying as well, you have to think because most of the universal ones are a gray or a black or like kind of muted colors. And now when we come to the, when we come to these guys, the Noble Collection ones, you have, uh, you have some bright colors in there. You got some reds, some purples, some, some lime, limer greens than this. So it does get pretty colorful a little bit. So if you don't mind that, then these are great. Then you'll, you'll love these. It, it won't be a big deal. But if you want something more muted, you're gonna have to go with these. But remember the price of these guys, just keep that in mind. Obviously the um, Barnes and Noble one, you can display it like this. You can, you can put it on a shelf if you want. Just here you go, look, displayed. Doesn't look that bad, but also doesn't look that good. It definitely looks the worst out of all of them. Advantage, you could make your own box and it would look great and it would be the cheapest alternative. And of course we have the collector box. If you guys are ever wondering the best way to display these, in my opinion, personally, some people like to just leave them in the box closed, stack them. Come on now, why buy them if you're just gonna put them in a closet somewhere and, and stack them and not display them? This is the way that I like to display them. I take the little cloth thing, tuck it behind it. Usually I'll do one at a time. So you do that, you slide it into the box like a uh, so, boom. And then while that's in there, lift up this side, tuck this guy in, try to get it as taut as possible. You get that thing taut and then just close it up as best you can. And you have a pretty much the same display as this. Another disadvantage of this guy is that it is a little top heavy. So it has a tendency of wanting to tip over I would recommend maybe putting something up against it just to help it support it. But if you're just doing one, you're fine. It's just when you start stacking them on top of each other that it starts getting a little bit more, uh, a little bit more dangerous. Now we just need to tally up the results.
Results are in. My computer just printed out uh, a book with the results. So here they are. Um, when it comes to price, obviously, Barnes & Noble gets first place. A close second with, uh, with this little guy right here. For an extra 250, you can get this. Disadvantage, some wands aren't available in this. You would have to spend the extra 750 to get this little guy. Which brings us to third place. Um, this guy gets third place. Obviously, bringing up the rear, we have the uh, the universal wand box. Quality, obviously, we have the collector box. That's the point. It's a collector box. It's supposed to be fancier and have all the bells and whistles, blah, 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 blah. Tied for second place would be the Noble Collection and the universal box. Bringing up the rear for this round would be the, uh, the Barnes & Noble box. Moving on to the displayability of these boxes. There's a couple of things that I've learned about these is that um, one, this box and this box are gonna be the, the, the two best boxes to display. One, they're very low, so you don't have a lot of height when you start stacking them on top of each other. Therefore, less likely to tip over and they still look really good. The fact that it holds your wand in here is just excellent, it's perfect. Because what happens is, even if you flip it over like this and shake it a bit, it's not gonna fall out. I'm sure that if I smack it or something, it'll pop out, but if it falls off your shelf, it's gonna hopefully hold your wand and not fall right out and get damaged. Also, if you're ordering these online, it does come with this nice little foam insert here that sits right on top and um, it, it protects your wand. So if it came loose during shipping, it would, it would protect it which is nice. But now when it comes to this, this guy right here, this is the way that I like to display um, this box. I would give this guy third place. I would say that the Noble Collection boxes win over the Universal boxes when it comes to displaying because of that, that magical reason. The fact that it comes with the display if you end up buying four of them or 10 of them is pretty good. It also comes with that little, little hanger that you can stick on something if you want. So this guy definitely wins the display category, I would say. Obviously this little guy right here is gonna be, you know, last because it doesn't actually come with a, a display, but it does come with this little thing, which is better than nothing. I would definitely recommend saving this and just keeping your wand in this when you're not using it. Just the one to keep it safe, but also to um, display a little bit if you want, you know? Just a thought. You don't have to listen to me. Do you, do you, man? When it comes to overall value, when, when it comes to the, the meat and potatoes of the value. I don't think that makes sense. I would give it to the Noble Collection standard box. The only downside is that they don't have all of the wands, which you can say about any of these. So it's not really a downside because they, none of them have all of the wands. So it's okay, right? It's fine, not, not a big deal. For second place, I would say it would be a tie for value between um, the collector box and the Barnes and Noble box because one, this is the second most expensive, but you do get a nice fancy box. And then this guy, you you don't. You pretty much, um, you get no box. You get a, uh, a retail box and that's about it. And you get that little thing, but it's $30. So it's like, it's the cheapest that you're gonna find a Noble Collection wand for anywhere really, unless you get a used one. But 30 bucks is, in the US, 30 bucks is a, is a good price for these. Especially if you're buying Dumbledore's wand, which if you guys didn't know is my favorite wand, um, it has real metal in it and stuff. So it's like, ooh, right there, 30 bucks. Easily could have charged 50 bucks for this. And I, I know people would pay for it because I'm pretty sure I would. So there you have it guys. This is the order from first to last that I would recommend you guys buying your wands. If you're gonna get, try to get all of them, I would say just stick with these two right here. That's your best bet. If you want a toy, go with this guy, but they don't have nearly as many as the other options do. And then Universal is just a ripoff. <laughs> the only advantage of going to Universal is if you're gonna buy one of the wands from the shop and it's like a cool experience and you're like, oh my God, this is so much fun. I'm at the wand shop, I got, Oh, there's Ollivander's assistant here just gave me this amazing wand. Then yeah, then it's worth it. You're paying for the experience. It's worth the extra little bit of money. You know? But if you're gonna be a real collector, I would say, um, unless you're made of money, 
I would stick with the Noble Collection ones directly from them. Maybe buy, save up and buy 10. It's like 300 and something dollars. Sounds like a lot of money. But if you were to buy 10 from Universal, 400, almost $500. So probably $500 after tax, I would say. Yeah, at least in the US. So I hope you enjoyed this um, comprehensive review of these boxes. Let me know what you guys think down below. Also, if you guys wanna support the channel, make sure to jump over to that Patreon. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Stay tuned for some more stuff. Hit the little notification. Just do all the things that the YouTubers tell you guys to do because it helps us out, you know? It's just as simple as that. And make sure to go check out some of the giveaways that we're doing right now because we're always doing some sort of giveaway. So I'm sure there's one going on as we speak. Thank you guys for watching once again and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye-bye. Uh,